what I want to do is pick your brain as somebody who knows the physiology of cancer, what we can do preventatively to live a healthy lifestyle and hopefully not get to the point where we have cancer and have to make treatment decisions that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, well, everybody likes to talk about it. Nobody likes to do it. Um, prevention of cancer is um, is something, it's very difficult in our in our lifestyle, in the Western lifestyle, uh, to everybody's rolling the dice uh, with the hope that they're not going to get cancer. It's diet and lifestyle and our culture that is ultimately responsible for us getting cancer. And not only cancer, heart disease, uh, type 2 diabetes, obesity. I mean, these things are all linked to the same problem, which is poor diet and lack of exercise. Um, if people were really interested in cancer prevention, if people were really interested in cancer prevention, we would not have an obesity epidemic, okay? We would not have an obesity epidemic if people were really interested in cancer prevention. If obesity is a major risk factor for getting cancer, why, is, why do we have an obesity epidemic? All right, simple question. Um, why do we have an a, a, a epidemic of type 2 diabetes? If people were really interested in preventing cancer, because diabetes and obesity and all these things are all linked, making you at a higher risk for getting cancer. Because our diet and lifestyle is preventing us from the prevention strategy, right? I mean, uh, I mean, look at, look at the fast food that we have. I mean, you don't even have to get out of the car and they hand you the food through the window. Uh, there's even no exercise to get out. Our ancestors had to work very, very hard to get food. In the, in, the, in the Paleolithic period, uh, we had to hunt down and kill animals and, and skin them and cook them. I mean, this took a lot of energy, right? And there's no carbohydrate in that stuff either. So uh, our Aboriginal populations had no cancer. The great humanitarian physician, Albert Schweitzer, went into the jungles of Africa and said most people never had cancer. They didn't even know what it was. Eskimos, originally, when they were first looked at, didn't have cancer. They don't eat any, 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 any. They're all eating, you know, whales and blubber and kinds of stuff. And they never had cancer. Chimpanzees are closest relatives in biological terms. And they don't, never been a documented case of breast cancer in a chimpanzee. And yet now breast cancer has replaced heart disease as the number one killer of American women. And what the hell is going on here? So uh, the chimp is living on a diet lifestyle that he had when he first evolved as a species. We are not. We are far, far from how we evolved as a species. We are now in an environment rich with poorly nutritious foods, very little exercise. We're sitting in front of computers. We're sitting in cars. Um, okay, there's your risk. So you want? how do you prevent this? Well, we're all not going to go back and live in a cave. So, uh, so the issue is um, you've got to know what is the risk factor for cancer, and you've got to know how to prevent it. And as I said, if we have an obesity epidemic, that message is not getting out. As a matter of fact, they're blaming our genes on obesity. Our genes are doing exactly what they evolved to do, store energy because we starve for most of our existence on this planet. We need to have a good, a good physiology to store as much energy because we had to go through famine. We had to go through a lot of restrictions, these harsh environments, and we needed that energy. And those genes evolved over tens of thousands of years to allow us to store energy, okay? Now we're in an environment where there's poorly nutritious carbs everywhere. People are getting fat and they're getting cancer and they're getting all these other kinds of diseases. So if people were really interested in prevention, there would be no, no obesity epidemic. The fact that we have the epidemic means that nobody's interested in preventing, not nobody, many people in our society are not interested in prevention. Once you get cancer, what are you gonna do for me? Not that difficult. Well, I think the big challenge is that to prevent cancer, you have to go against a lot of the ways that society is naturally going these days. And you have to do your own research and live an yeah. alternative, quote unquote, lifestyle to try and get back, like you said, to the Paleolithic times. And there's a lot against us, and it does take a lot of effort yeah. to figure it out and a lot of conflicting information for people that yeah. do decide to get in and do the learning. So I do feel for people, and I hope having these conversations like I do help clarify for people. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. When I'm talking to you about, almost nobody in the field knows anything that I'm saying here. 
And how do I know that? Because they're not using these techniques in their, in their clinics. If they, if they understood what I'm saying, they would be transitioning over to this immediately.